Right, it's Mr. Palmer here with another computer science video. Finishing off the series on data structures with a video on trees. It's quarter to two in the morning, so trust me, this one is going to get knocked out in a single take. Uh, before you continue with this video, make sure you've gone over your notes on data structures. Make sure you've gone over your notes on multi-dimensional arrays. Right, I'm waiting for you to go over your notes, and this is particularly what I'd rather be doing right now. So the big questions for this little video, what is a tree? How do you retrieve data from a tree? How do you add and delete notes? Delete notes from a tree. Or add notes to a tree and delete notes from a tree. Okay, so tree basically is a non-linear data structure. Queues, arrays, stacks, linked lists, the, th the four things you've looked at so far, they're all linear. Okay, in a tree each node points at two or more nodes. And this helps to form a hierarchical structure. What am I talking about? Basically, turn that frown upside down. Okay, a bit more like this, where each node has a left and a right pointer, points at, points at further nodes. Okay, creating a hierarchy of data. So there's a bit of terminology you need to know here. First of all, uh, you have got the root node at the top. Those are just called nodes. B is a parent of D. And that green rectangle that I highlighted earlier, for some random reason, is a layer. Okay? H, I, J, K, L, M. They're all leaves. Okay? Or terminal nodes. Because they're at the end of the branch. Okay? Um, the X's represent null pointers. So when you're using this is an example of using a tree, okay, for example, your student number could lead to a node uh, or which has your name, which leads to preferred name, middle name, surname. Yeah, you, you might have a contact, their name, their relationship, contact number, email. So by traversing the tree and the word, the keyword here to know is traverse, uh, you can basically retrieve all of the related data for a particular item. Okay, another use for store uh, for a tree is to store um, a list of data in order and then it's quite easy to search notice in this tree there are multiple data items coming off each node all right uh, uh, it's not really useful in computer science to have that it's more common to see what we call a binary tree okay where you have only two nodes two child nodes from each parent uh, they are determined by value so usually what's on the left pointer is lower than the parent and what's on the right pointer is higher in value than the parent usually okay so i'm going to just go back to looking at a linked list again okay or an array when you search through a, a, an array or a linked list you tend to go from item to item to item until you find the one that you're looking for and then you're like okay here it is this is not the most efficient way. There are other ways of searching, but this one we're just going to stick with um, as, a, uh, as a way of just looking at a timely search. Because if you have lots and lots and lots of data items, it will take a long time to go through each single uh, item to find a match. Okay? So when you have a binary tree, it's a bit easier, quicker to search. Basically, you have a set of rules. You compare your criteria with the root node. Obviously, if it matches with the root node, then bang, you're done. Okay. If what you're looking for is lower than the root node, then you follow the left pointer, else you follow the right pointer. You compare the node you're at. If it's not a match, then you repeat from step two again. If it's lower, go left. Otherwise, go right. See if you've got a match. So what that looks like, here I've got a tree. Okay. I'm looking for Fei Long in my tree. So I compare Fei Long with M. Bison is clearly lower so I follow the left pointer to check Darseem Darseem is clearly uh, Fei Long is higher than Darseem so I follow the right branch higher than E Honda follow the right branch and bang I found Fei Long in my binary tree so you can use an adaptation of this technique to retrieve all of the data from the tree in one go so if you think about when you're like you iterate through an array for example to return all of the data 
you can you might well, you will need to do the similar thing with a tree where you want to return all of the data that's in the tree so if you haven't traversed the left branch then you follow and you keep going down the left branch in order until you hit the terminal node and then if you haven't read that node you read it and return the data and then you look for a right branch if there's a right branch then you follow the right branch and then you keep uh, going down the left branches again until you hit a bottom hit the bottom and then you go back up a layer you check that branch repeat it etc what that looks like is something like this I'm going to start off at M. Bison. I follow the left branch down to Dalsim. I follow the left branch again down to Blanca. I follow the left branch down again to Balrog. No more branches there for me. I'm a term terminal node, so I return that data at Balrog. Okay. Now, if I look at my uh, set of instructions, uh, there are no more left branches. I return the data at step two. There's no right branch, so step four, I go back up one layer to Blanca. Okay. I've done the left branch already. And I haven't read Blanca before. I'm on step two. So I return that. So, so far my list is going to go Balrog, Blanca. Now I need to follow the right branch, Kami. Kami doesn't have a left branch, it's a null pointer. Okay, so I return Kami. And then I need to check the right node for the right pointer. So for the right branch of Kami, I return Chun Li. So I've gone Balrog, Blanca, Kami, Chun Li. Now I need to go back up a layer. I've read this node, so I go back up a layer. I've read this node, I go back up a layer. I haven't read this one, so and I've gone down the left branch already. So left branch is all done, step one is finished. I'm on Dao Seam. I haven't read this node, so I return Dao Seam. Now I'm going to go down the right branches. So I go down the right branch and no left branches. Haven't returned this node, so therefore return E Honda. And then no left branch, traverse the right branch, no left branches, no right branches, return this node, Fei Long. And then I'm going to go all the way back up, back up the layer, back up the layer, back up the layer until I get to M Bison again. And then you can see I'm going through the steps. And if you've noticed, I'm going Balrog, Blanca, Kami, Chun Li, Dao Sim, Eonda, Fei Long, M Bison, Ryu, Vega. And I, I, by traversing my tree, following that algorithm, I basically return the entire tree in uh, ascending order. Quite useful. If you want to add data to a binary tree, you basically follow the search routine until you find an empty node, and then you add that new node, and then you update the pointer from the parent to the new node, because it previously would have been null. All right? What that looks like is something like this. I want to put guile into my um, binary tree. So remember the search um, algorithm, think, 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 right? It was compare the root node, if it's lower, go left, if, if what you're looking for is higher, go right. So Guile versus M. Bison, lower, so I go left. Guile and Darsim, higher, go right. Guile E. Honda, higher, go right. Guile Fei Long, higher, I need to go right. So basically, I can insert Guile into my tree and my null point pointer from Fei Long now points to the memory location uh, that Guile is stored in. Hooray! Back to arrays. So you can use an array to create a tree. Yeah. Yes, you're going to tell me, yeah, but arrays are single uh, data types and well, you need to go back and look at record structures to begin with. Secondly, quite often you would be just maybe perhaps storing integers or something like that in your uh, tree. So no big deal. Okay, now uh, you can see that M Bison being my root node is in index zero of my array and my left pointer points at element number one, which was Darsim. Darsim has a left and a right pointer, points at uh, element three and element four so on and so forth and if you flick back in the video and you compare that to the tree you can see how the tree structure matches up to the array if i want to delete data from a binary tree it gets a bit more complicated because you can see that for example deleting uh 
Balrog or Gaia will be quite straightforward because they're just terminal pointers. What happens if I want to delete E Honda or Blanca or Ryu or someone like that? Because then there's a few other pointers that need to be shifted around. Okay, so in the case where I want to delete a leaf node or a terminal node at the end, if I'm deleting Balrog, it's quite straightforward. I just delete it and I change the left pointer of the parent node to a null so that we know that it's, uh, that it's a, a terminal node uh, on that. Sorry, there's no, no, no node on the left side anymore. Bit more uh, complicated when you have a single pointer. So if I want to delete Fei Long in the middle of the tree, right? Uh, here, it's a bit more complicated than a terminal node, but still quite straightforward. Because if I delete Fei Long, Guile needs to be connected to something. And I can see when I compare E Honda to Guile that yeah, Guile is greater, so therefore E Honda needs a new right pointer which points at Guile. The more complex one is when I have both left and right pointers from uh, a tree. Okay? Now, uh, ignore that purple X that has just come up in Chun-Li. Uh, like I said, it's almost 2 a.m. and I'm not going to retake this video. So I want to delete uh, Blanca from my tree. Right? When I delete Blanca, uh, I would need to do a search of the subtree underneath Blanca to find the greatest um, the, the, the data I know with the greatest value. So by doing this search, so I go from Blanca, I go I need to go right to Kami, from Kami I go right again to Chun Li, and I've traversed my tree and I find the greatest value. Chun Li will now replace Blanca at that position. Okay, so uh, Blanca's uh, point, Chun Li's pointers take on the value of Blanca's pointers, so she now points to Balrog and Kami. Dao Sim, the parent node, needs to point to Chun Li. And then Kami can now point at a new terminal node. Uh, her pointer, sorry, can become null so that she becomes a terminal node. All right, obviously, if there was a subtree underneath Kami, then Kami would need to point at where Chun Li used to point. It looks like we're doing some crazy stuff, moving data around items around in memory, but remember, all we're doing actually are changing pointers, right? Chun Li takes on Blanca's pointers, Dalsim now points to Chun Li, and Kami gets a null pointer three shifts that have taken place. All right. So, uh, I reckon you should pause the video here and do these exercises. I'm not going to read them out. So the big questions, first of all, you should be able to explain what a tree is in terms of it being a hierarchical structure with pointers that point out more than one node, right? You need to understand the search routine to search through a tree and we're going to come across this again later on and then uh, you should based on that search routine you should understand how to add and delete nodes from a tree and then you need to uh, know the traversal routine as how how do you follow the left left pointers down to the end check the values of the nodes go up a level go down the right the left etc to tra traverse the entire tree to return the data from it this is mr palmer signing off and I'll catch you guys later on for my next video. Can't remember the topic this time.